with me is professor bimal patel he has been elected to the international law commission and with a huge majority at the united nations general assembly uh, so welcome to vion and my first question obvious question this is a proud moment for india your first reaction to this development uh, thank you very much uh, it is my great pleasure and honor and i thank honorable prime minister honorable home minister honorable external affairs minister and the entire ministry for the faith and the efforts for securing the highest votes in the elections for this international law commission membership for the term 2327 it is a matter of great pride and i would like to live up to the expectations of my country with the utmost sincerity hard work and commitment mm -hmm. Uh, sir, uh, you are here in uh, Delhi. You had a lot of meetings as well uh, with the Foreign Secretary, with the External Affairs Minister. What were the conversations like uh, regarding, of course, this development, an important development for India? Uh, there is a huge revival and importance of international law in the international law making, and realizing the importance of international law not just for the. development of law but for the security for the economic development and in some cases very survival of the nation states when we are talking for an example the sea level rise mm. therefore the international law has never received so much importance as of now mm. and therefore for country like india which is definitely increasing its quality footprint in terms of bringing a global voice not only of india but also of similarly situated countries and secondly to develop the international law uh, as a common language to resolve number of problems and also to forge international cooperation and friendship so therefore uh, the entire ministry of external affairs but i would say the entire country is very much looking forward what international law has for the country india and also the countries like india and how international law can truly become a vehicle for cooperation and friendship which we all require in this uh, current century mm -hmm. uh, so international law commission uh, many of our viewers would like to know what is the importance of this commission what does this commission do and uh, india being at the commission what are the advantages for india or how india can of course uh, uh, bring to the table what india can bring to the table when it comes to the international law commission uh, <coughs> international law commission is a subsidiary organ of the united nations general assembly 34 members every 5 year are elected for the term of 5 years the main aim of this commission is to study the codification of international law and progressive development of international law to simplify for our viewers state practice means what a particular on on a particular topic how does state act or react or omit on a particular topic and to put together such state practices across the globe then it becomes what we call whether it is a rule of international law which is accepted in the practice and also the states consider that they are legally obliged so what we call open your juris legally obliged to follow such a practice and similarly there are a number of areas where there are no laws and uh, what ought to be the law and here again the international law commission studies those areas and proposes to the united nations general assembly and of course to the un member states what the new legal instrument should look like it should look like a treaty a resolution or simply a report in other words depending upon the requirement of the international community the international law commission an independent expert body proposes to the un member states such legal instruments or legal products which would directly benefit uh, to the member states in further promoting uh, the united nations charter aims and object so in other words the international law commission holds a uh, truly uh, great importance uh, for international law making international law execution and international law interpretation so in all three aspects of law the ilc holds um, a significant influence across the globe and very importantly the members are uh, having a recognized competence of international law so they bring independent view mm -hmm. but at the same time remain acutely aware of the needs the interests and concerns of the member states 
so you could imagine the by studying the reality of um, development of states we try to bring the needs interests and concerns to the international law commission and through ilc to the general assembly and therefore the ilc um, is recognized as one of the most prestigious and very significant number of conventions for example international criminal court mm -hmm. the rome statute was the work of ilc similarly the united nations convention on law of the sea which we call O, uh, Constitution of the Ocean was very much work of the United Nations International Law Commission. And there are a number of international conventions that have been actually worked upon by the Commission, which is now part of the international law which we all witness on a day-to-day -day, day basis. Mm -hmm. uh, what does India bring to the table in terms of international law? Uh, as you just rightly pointed out, uh, uh, the International Law Commission its major role is codification of international law. So can we see this Indian strand in the international law as well now? Uh, India brings unique perspective as a, one of the most important principal legal systems and the oldest civilization. And this combination of the legal system and oldest civilization, if we look at the entire South Asian uh, continent, subcontinent, that brings the, the conventions, the treaties, the norms, which evolve in practices of all these countries in the South Asia hold an important, um, important say in the international lawmaking. And therefore, on each of the issues, India brings uh, enormous importance uh, to the international lawmaking through the International Law Commission. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the benign views of India, the global views of India, and I must emphasize when I was interacting with um, delegations in New York for, uh, for this election, you'll be very surprised to know that the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of Vasudeva Kutungvakam, that is one, uh, the whole world is one family, which is also the Vion uh, in a way, um, that has been quote-unquote actualized importance by the people of international law. Similarly, the Prime Minister's vision or the mantra, if I say, of Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Prayas or Sabka Vishwas. Now this is, I mean, the pandemic, which has uh, very acutely made us realize the importance of mantra. And the same thing when we are talking of pandemic and international law, I could very well utilize this mantra given by Honorable Prime Minister in convincing or in talking to my, um, uh, you know, uh, delegations over there. What does it mean in terms of tackling issues like what we have been facing? So in other words, uh, the civilizational values and the entire um, principal legal system, you know, we, we, are, we are part of the common law system, mm -hmm. um, we are bringing to the fore into International Law Commission. In other words, uh, this is a century of um, developing countries, this is a century of uh, small island developing states, and I think their voices are very important in International Law Commission. Particularly, I can say, the regional approach, regional voice, mm -hmm in international lawmaking is so much important because until and unless um, the due importance and due regard to regional wise, be it Africa, Asia, uh, are given into the international lawmaking, the international law can be, uh, can, can hardly have the appeal and the utility to international community as a whole. And therefore I believe that international law has never uh, received such an unprecedented importance. And as, as a member, uh, of International Law Commission, I'm duty bound to make sure that I do study and I do bring the regional voices uh, into the functioning of uh, International Law Commission. Mm -hmm. So my last question to you is, uh, the international law has been evolving progressively from the world wars uh, till today. We have seen solidification or codification of international law. There are, of course, few instances of countries not following the international law as well. But if you look at the future, where do you see international law going? Uh, do you see uh, more countries following it? And new areas where we need to have international law consensus, like crypto cryptocurrency is one such area. So do you see uh, new international law being being thought of when it comes to the, these new sectors? Yes, in fact, in all these newly emerging sectors which you identify cryptocurrency, it has directly importance with regard to number of cases which are being there. Also, we are talking the um, investor and state arbitration. Now, that is an area where you would always find some importance in the future. Um, number two is like the pandemic. We never expected that 
a medical health issue will occupy the importance of international legal community which is happening similarly we are talking the cyber security so we are talking the data privacy but we are also talking the responsibility of international organizations here myself was involved in preparing the talinan manual and which talks about um, the responsibility of international organizations with regard to the cyber security and data privacy so these are the new issues where what we believe is that classical areas of international law will have significant influence whereas we will depend upon the technical experts and technical organizations maybe it is uh, world health organization or for example uh, in in uh, itu for example in the area of telecommunication but we'll be working together with regional organizations or sector specific organizations to make sure that the sectoral input gets fine tuned and translated into the development of the uh, international legal product which is acceptable whether it is a treaty or whether it is a resolution which is acceptable and which guides the member states as to how they should conduct uh, uh, i would not say how should they conduct but how do they conduct themselves in in um, resolving issues or in framing uh, their national laws well thank you so much sir for speaking to vion extensively about many issues and of course the role international law commission does and the future of international law so there you have it uh, uh, the professor professor bimal patel talking about uh, uh, the development and of course uh, india at the commission the role india will be playing at the commission with video journalist ajit sidhan sibal for vion in new delhi